Well, you see, there's a sign over here. Reminding me about family court. <laughs> well, not really. I'm just making that up as an excuse. Our topic today is how different it is in China. Family courts, basically. Hey, Simok. Yeah. What does that sign remind you of? Hmm. Which one? This one or this one? That one. This one? Reminds me of a bathroom sign. Doesn't it remind you of family court? Oh, it looks like family court, exactly. And how, you know, different genders are treated differently in law proceedings involving divorce. Yeah. See? At least we're on the same page. Yeah. So we're going to hit the road and we'll continue with the subject. So, Seamilk. Yes. Let's not, uh, let's not get into politics here because this is a very contentious kind of a thing. Let's just basically state facts and, you know, then we can be good with it. Okay. But basically in the West, whatever the circumstances that have led to it right now, if you get embroiled in any kind of family court, let's say you're married and you get divorced. Yeah. Uh, the courts in, in Western countries, especially where I come from, South Africa, and I'm pretty sure it's the same in America and the UK, the court will always favor the woman um, in any kind of situation. So I'm talking about custody of children, uh, you know, something like 80%. I, I don't want to mix the numbers here, but a huge percentage of women will get the custody rather than the man. Okay. Uh, and when divorces happen, the women will usually get a big portion of the husband's possessions, like maybe... 50% or get the house or you know, there's always a big settlement involved sure. right in divorces and that's just facts Nobody can dispute those facts. Nope. So we're not going to talk about why that happens or how Bloody unfair it is because that's not what we're doing here What we want to tell people is how in China. It's actually pretty much flipped around flipped yeah. on its head. Yeah, so um, maybe you can start by talking about some uh, divorce statistics. Well, back in the day, about 10 years ago, there was about 0 .0, sorry, 0 0.8 divorces per 1,000 marriages, right? Okay. Um, and America has held true at about 3 or 3.2. But then okay. uh, last year, just last year actually, it's gone up to 2.8 per 1,000 marriages. So it's quickly catching up with uh, America's divorce rate. Why? The reason is, is um, you know, the importance of property and yes. owning a house here in China. So what happens is uh, culturally, so actually we can't really blame this on the government's laws as much as we can blame it on how things work in China. And that's when you get married, the uh, son, basically his parents will buy a house for the wife and, and uh, husband. Right. And of course that that uh, house will either continue to be in the parent's name, the you know, the son's parent's name, or transferred to him. Yeah. So. There were some laws enacted um, because, you know, as there's a famous quote, as Mao says, women hold up half the sky. So right. compared to some other uh, East Asian countries, China's actually pretty good on women's rights. And actually the divorce law was fairly fair, which yeah. I'm going to say fairly fair for women when things split up. But in 2011, they changed the law to uh, basically favor the property owner so that people weren't getting screwed over by getting divorced randomly just so they could have certain properties. Right. Because of the housing bubble and all, you know the prices kind of skyrocketing. Yeah. So what happened was um, in 2011 since then, the court pretty much rules in favor of the man. And uh, you know, there's been stories of women that have poured their heart and soul into getting a lawyer and trying to get their property and half the possessions and stuff. But it's, uh, you know, the, the greatest reward that we were able to come up with on the internet is about 200,000 RMB. And of course yeah. a house or an apartment's worth a lot more than that. So when you said it's flipped on its head, it's, you know, the polar opposite is absolutely true because the men end up with pretty much everything, even the kids, mm -hmm. uh, when a divorce happens in China. Yeah, it's got a lot to do with the way society is here. But actually, another reason, uh, the reason why we've got such a high divorce rate now is because couples are on purpose getting divorced so that they can get around property buying rules, you know? Because basically, the government's been putting in some strict controls to try and stop people speculating so much and owning like 10 properties, 10 right. apartments. Right, right, right. And uh, part of this law is basically, they say, uh, married couples can only own like X amounts of properties, right? Yeah. So then people are getting divorced so that they can 
purchase more properties they still live together and they're still husband and wife but they're getting legally divorced so that's that's skewing the numbers a lot gotcha yeah anyway um you're talking about uh you know the whole buying a house it, yeah it's definitely part of the culture here there's a it's almost like you need a dowry in fact you do need a dowry in yep. a lot of cases yep. uh, some of my friends who've married chinese women have actually had to pay cash dowries i did as well yeah and uh, it depends on what status in uh, society that woman has yeah but you know it'll start from as little as like ten thousand rmb and go all the way up into hundreds of thousands of rmb yeah if not millions yeah um and uh, it kind of reminds me of Africa because in Africa they've got something called a, in South Africa called a labola which if you want to marry someone you have to give the father of the bride like 10 cows or whatever that's the same so thing it's kind of cows or I sheep I a lot of a lot of countries have this yeah you know 10 bales of hay or whatever you never know where you know right that's a cheap um, cheap wife yeah but you know hay and hay the thing is you have to you're basically buying the wife is what's happening right yeah yeah of course so i think that might play into this as well somewhat it's like well i paid for you you know you, <laughs> you know what i'm saying right it's a bit weird but you know this this um the the culture in china is quite chauvinistic you know and the man is always kind of put first yeah and it's reflected in what happens in divorces and although the laws are there sorry let's get past these noisy trucks um Although the laws are there to also protect women, China's a, a country where connections and guanxi are very important. So Correct. if if the woman is married into like a, a rich family and then she gets divorced, first of all there's going to be a lot of shame put on a woman because a divorced woman is looked down upon here in China yes. in, a, in a big way. Right. Uh, we've talked about this before and it's like if you're divorced if you're a single divorced woman it's actually very difficult to get married again yeah you yeah know? so you've got that issue and then you've now been divorced it's going to be very difficult to fight against a rich family to try and get your half of whatever That's or right. your custody because if they've got money they they've got connections with all the police and all the courts and stuff so you're pretty much screwed right yeah so what else can we add to this i think it's about it pretty much it's a it's just another one of those things about china you know uh, yeah things things are changing the laws are there but you know it's just the way things run and there's no way to change it no <laughs> so if you're a woman here in china and you get divorced like my wife was previously divorced she got nothing not a thing from her nice. previous marriage not one thing not a cent to be fair if i got divorced in china i'd end up with absolutely nothing because i'm a foreigner and guess what we just yeah. talked about the difference between males and males and females and how women get shafted here but yeah. we get the most shafted yes foreigners are even worse yeah they'll just if you try to kick up a fuss they'll just deport you do you hear, do you <laughs> hear that subscribers we're lower than women <laughs> women are always higher than us man come on I know. Gotta, gotta show respect to Joe. Anyway, the, the fact of the matter is, like, yeah, we we will actually get deported, and all our assets will be seized if we kick kick up a fuss. Anyway, so for sure, for sure, that's life. Okay, so let's uh, end this cheery topic by saying that I hope if you're in a marriage that it, that it bloody lasts and that you're happy. You know, yeah. like like us. I'm in a very happy marriage. I love my wife. She loves me. We're good. Exactly. Same with you, right? Of course. Yeah. Awesome. So wishing the best of luck to everybody out there who is married or planning to get married. Let's hope it never does end up in divorce. Right. Cool. So uh, anything you want to say to our subscribers before we sign off? Well, whether you've tied the knot or have not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Um, I hope you like, comment, and subscribe because it really helps us out. Sweet. And uh, whether or not you are somebody who considers marriage as part of your life plan or somebody who just says, screw it, you know, let's go through life and have uh, life partners or whatever you want to say, we love you all the same. So until next time, you know the drill. Stay awesome.